back as we continue our video series featuring black artists and musicians here in the Boot Hill. This is a part of our Black History Month video series. My name is Mary Ann Wright and I'm a 4-H area educator and assistant to the regional coordinator for Lincoln University Cooperative Extension. This video series is being led by some of the teams that participate in our Lincoln programs. Today's interview is going to be facilitated by Ms. Terrica Jackson. Hi, my name is Terrica Jackson and I am a junior at Carrottesville High School. It is my pleasure to introduce our guest, Lemmy Pullman. A little bit about myself. Well, my name is Libby Pulliam, and I was born and raised here in Kennett, Missouri. I went to school at Kennett High School, and uh, the youngest of 10 children, my mom and dad. My dad is a, a pastor in the area. Uh, he pastors a church in Wyatt, Missouri, uh, which is near Charleston, and uh, I'm a professional opera singer. Is it fun? It is fun. It is fun. Um, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people who I always told myself, uh, if, if something ever stops being fun, I won't do it anymore. Mm. And I actually did stop singing for about 10 years um, and recently returned to the industry in 2013. Um, you know, so it stopped being fun and I pursued other interests. And uh, as with most things, life usually leads you back to where you need, where you're supposed to be. And that's what happened is that life happened and I just kind of followed the path and it led me right back to music. I don't know what necessarily fuels it. I think part of it is my, my love for making music. Um, and part of it is my, um, as, as much as people <laughs> don't like to admit it, you know, there's something about being in front of an audience that gives you this thrill, this burst of adrenaline. And to think that you're, you're able to do something that so many people from different backgrounds are able to appreciate all together is, is something that's really kind of invigorating. So that kind of excites me. Is there anyone who you could identify that gave you the idea to pursue music? Uh, yeah, I can actually almost tell you, if, if I could look back at the calendar, almost tell you the day that I was introduced to opera. It was during my sophomore year of high school uh, by my choir director, who uh, uh, Ms. Beretta Sexton, who taught at uh, Kennett Middle School, Kennett High School here during my time. And she's the one who introduced me to opera. Um, I used to be a little bit of a class clown, and I was in school choir. <laughs> And she asked me to stay after class one day. And I thought I was in trouble. But little did I know she was going to introduce me to something that was gonna basically change my life. And she handed me a recording, a cassette tape, which I don't know if you know what a cassette tape is. Do you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but she handed me a cassette tape and a piece of sheet music and asked me to take it home to learn it. And on the cassette tape was a gentleman by the name of Luciano Pavarotti, who is a famous Italian tenor, probably the most famous tenor opera singer of the last century. And I started listening to the song that she asked me to learn, and I learned it. But then I started listening to the songs that came before and after it. And it was listening to those other songs and hearing this new sound that I wasn't familiar with. I grew up in the church. You know, so gospel music was what I knew. But hearing this new sound that I had never heard before kind of piqued my interest. And what excited me even more was when I saw it in person on television, I saw that these people were doing what they were doing without microphones. They were able to sing and project their voices over an orchestra and over all these other musicians without the use of a microphone. And so that kind of was like, wow, okay, how is this human po humanly possible? And little did I know by being in choir that Miss Sexton was teaching me how to do that without me even knowing it really. 
It was a matter of just kind of utilizing and then explaining things to me and saying, oh, remember when I told you to do this? This helps you be able to do this. And uh, yeah, so she was the one who introduced me to it and it basically changed my life from that day forward. Adding on to that, who are some of your biggest uh, obviously, Luciano Pavarotti, who was my introduction to opera. Um, but it was others, uh, thanks to PBS, which is kind of a free uh, channel on television. I was introduced to people like George Shirley, uh, who was the first black tenor to sing a leading role at the Metropolitan Opera. I was introduced to people like Leontine Price, uh, Marian Anderson, Jesse Norman, Kathleen Battle. Grace Bumbry, uh, who is also a, a native Missourian from St. Louis, who is one of the, all these people were some of the greatest opera singers in the world. And it was seeing those people who look like me that made me think, okay, this is a potential career for me. This is something that I could do. Um, you know, prior to that, I'd only seen, you know, Italians and, and Caucasians and whatnot doing it. But once I saw people who look like me, it was like, Wow, okay, this is something I think I can do. What are some steps that you took to help you get where you are today? Um, well, it all started with choir, school choir for me. I uh, studied in school choir uh, from middle school through high school, and then uh, started piano lessons late in high school. And then I went on to study at the Overlook Conservatory of Music in Ohio which is a small town near Cleveland, and uh, which is one of the, also one of the top conservatory, music conservatories in the country. And went on to study there and, uh, you know, kind of learn the ins and outs of the career, of the business, and, and uh, do everything I needed to do to prepare myself to pursue this as a career. Is there any training involved, or do you believe it's from talent? Uh, talent is, is part of it but talent will only take you so far. Um, most people don't realize it, but as an opera singer, I've studied, actually I still study to this day, I have a voice teacher that I still work with regularly. Um, but we often study longer than most doctors do to be able to pursue a field in, in medicine. You know, um, our, our studies, as with most careers, your studies really never end. You're constantly learning. Uh, there's always something new to learn, um, whether it's a new trend in the industry uh, or new techniques to help things work, your breath and whatnot, work more efficiently. Um, so yeah, you, you never really stop studying in this field or you know, in those fields really. How do you share your music? Um, well, I travel quite a bit from, uh, I'm what they call a freelancer. Uh, so we travel from, from city to city, state to state, country to country, and I sing with different orchestras, I sing with different opera companies. I also do solo recitals with myself and just a pianist. Um, so yeah, that's, those are the ways we normally share. We use social media to share recordings of things we've done. How do you feel when you be on stage and how do you be? There's really no way to explain it, but to, you know, when I'm singing in an opera, it's almost as if I kind of, let me, kind of disappears. And whatever character I'm portraying is what I want people to see. I don't want people to be like, oh, let me so good, look at, let me, you know, I want them to see the character I'm portraying. Um, so I always do my best to kind of disappear into the character. Um, but there's really nothing more exciting than at the end of a long night when everything has gone well to hear the roar of that audience. I mean, it's, there's really nothing like it until you've stood on a stage and had, you know, 3,000 people standing up screaming back at you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite a, a unique experience. Is making music a business for you and do you make a living doing it? Mm -hmm. Making music is my business. Um, uh, 
you know, and it's it's how I make my primary living now. Just traveling and singing and you know utilizing the skills I've learned, whether it's you know, music, languages. Languages is one of the big requirements of what we do. I sing in English, French, Italian, German, Russian, Czech, Spanish, and I think that's it. Those are the languages I had to learn to sing in. Um, I actually speak Italian, French, some German, and my Spanish is very rusty right now. I'm taking the Spanish class now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of hard. Yeah. What are some of the biggest obstacles you face? Um, in this industry, probably the biggest obstacle for me is we, we're dealing with issues of equity within, within our industry right now. Um, equity with, with people of color equity when dealing with individuals of size. Um, so you have all different ways of, of people choosing to discriminate against you for different reasons or one or another. Um, but we're kind of at a point in our industry now where a lot of these things, a lot of these issues are coming to the forefront and there are industry-wide discussions taking place. And we're even starting to see change within the industry um, where we're starting to see more people of color uh, being cast in, in leading roles and leading romantic roles. Um, for a long time that was, a, that was an issue for a lot of people. They didn't like to see an African American male in a leading role uh, with someone of the opposite race. Um, so those are lingering issues that we're still dealing with and uh, we're slowly and, and just continually to move forward and kind of push for change, for the much needed change in, in our industry. Does your race influence your work? I, th I think it does. Not, I would say culturally, as an African American, I think the culture influences my musicianship. Um, obviously, growing up in the church, um, gospel music still heavily influences my musical choices and how I choose to sing things. Uh, or what's, what we call phrasing, is how you choose to sing a series of notes. Um, I think the different styles of music that I grew up listening to uh, influence me now as an artist. Um, you know, it all goes through your life experiences. They all influence, they all influence what I do now as an artist. In the classical music world, yes, it's, it's a very small, especially among black singers or singers of color in general. Our community is, it's not small, but it's small. And we're becoming more of a close-knit community um, in that we're all seeing that it's, it's, it's becoming more of a team effort to, to bring about the type of change we all want to see. Um, so we all have our own, you know, have you heard that phrase, it takes a village? You know, we all have our own individual villages that kind of help us throughout this process and continue to kind of uh, support us and encourage us and, you know, we try to be that for each other as, as artists, especially within the, in the community of, for singers of color, we all try to be there to encourage each other. Uh, you know, be sounding boards for each other, and yeah, that's, so there are definite advantages to it. Is your work targeted to the black community? Not, not necessarily. Um, there are things that I do that are specifically targeted targeted towards the black community. Um, I love to do outreach uh, whenever I'm traveling. Um, I usually try to connect within with an organization. Uh, in the areas where I'm going that works with youth um, to maybe come in and do a talk or invite them to a rehearsal, um, you know, so that they can experience opera or classical music for the first time. Um, so that hopefully they'll have 
a similar experience that I had after hearing it. What does your music do to advocate for social justice in our area? And recently we've been doing a lot of, uh, we've been doing concerts um, of, of just Negro spirituals, uh, a full program of nothing but spirituals to introduce people and to make sure we keep this music in front of the public um, because it's, it's a part of our, our culture, it's part of our heritage, and it's up to artists like myself and my colleagues to make sure that music is kept alive. So, you know, as a lot of people say, you know, you know, a lot of people don't want to see a full concert of spirituals, but I have to remember, you know, the audiences that I perform for prove me, prove them wrong, is that these are songs that people enjoy uh, and people want to hear. And uh, to be able to present them in, in a setting that, uh, you know, you think songs that began in cotton fields and uh, plantations and whatnot are now being performed on some of the most prominent stages of the world. And uh, that to me is, is, is something to be proud of. What advice could you give to someone like such as a young person who wants to pursue music as a career? I would say to seek out people who do what you want to do or what you aspire to do. If it's to be a pianist, uh, find a way to, to take piano lessons. Start studying. I would say start young. Um, you know, because it's, it's, you know, things tend to kind of take if you start a little younger. Um, you know, I used to think, why would somebody want to take piano lessons at three, four years old? But as a musician, now I understand it because your mind at that age is kind of like a sponge. And so you start learning the fundamentals of something young and those fundamentals stay with you throughout the rest of your life. So I would say find someone in your community who does what it is you aspire to do. If it's piano, if it's guitar, um, I know some young people who uh, aspire to be organists because they see people playing in church and whatnot. Uh, singers, uh, find someone in your community who sings and, and ask them if they'll mentor you or work with you or, um, yeah, it's just seeking out people who and surround yourself by people who do what you aspire to do. Can you show us some of your work and, or tell us where we could find it or see it in person? Well, I have a website, which is www.limmypulliam.com. That's L-I-M-M-I-E-P-U-L-L-I-A-M.com. Um, I'm also on YouTube. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I have pages on all of those on all those platforms where you can find, um, you know, out what I'm doing. My website has my schedule on it, so you can see where I'm going to be appearing over the next uh, several months. And it also has videos and audio clips and whatnot that you can listen to as well. I'm most definitely going to go listen. <laughs> Could you give us a little demonstration of your work? Okay. Uh, let's see. Would you like to hear something? English, German, French, Italian, or something else? German? German, okay. So this is uh, a piece by a composer named Richard Wagner, and it is called Wintersturme, which means the winter storm. Wintersturme, wich in den Boden Mond, im milden Licht leuchtet der Lenz, Auf Linden lief den Leicht und lieblich, und wunderweben, der sich wiegt. Wow. As you spoke about this earlier, you said you say Negro spirituals. Could you maybe give us another demonstration? Okay. Um, this is uh, a spiritual called Give Me Jesus, and it was arranged by Oh, when I come to 
channel for additional videos and more information about 4-H.